Okay, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to do a proper IND of an abscess. Uh, when you're talking about abscess, there's a focal infection of perlant material in the subcutaneous tissue usually. The only treatment really that works is going to be incision and drainage. Cutting it open, draining that pus, and allowing it to heal. Treating abscesses with antibiotics alone is inappropriate and oftentimes will not do the job in terms of getting rid of that infection because the antibiotics just do not penetrate that pocket of pus. You really need to release that in terms of the healing process. So I'm going to walk you through the steps. Just of note, I'm not wearing any personal protective equipment for this other than gloves. If this was a real uh, patient uh, with perlant material, I would be wearing eye protection, a mask to protect my mouth, and a gown because it's, there's nothing worse than getting pus on your nice scrubs. So be aware, I'm not doing it for this video, but definitely PPE is important. So the first step is cleaning and prepping the patient. Uh, usually I use chloroprep or betadine and then drape it. I'm not going to go through that step right now because it's already been done for this. Uh, the drape, you want to make sure you have enough space so you can really access it. And be aware, if there is perlant material, that might go in other areas. So kind of protecting the patient from that perlant material is going to be helpful. The nurses are also uh, very happy when you protect the bed sheets, et cetera, from all the pus that can come out of these. The next step is going to be doing a field block. For this field block, I'm going to be using lidocaine 1% without epi. You can use it with epi if it's in the appropriate spot. But basically, a field block, you're going to be trying to decrease the pain of the incision and really the pain of you kind of going into that abscess. So we'll try to do the best we can with our field block. This is going to be a 27-gauge long needle. And usually, in terms of a field block, I like to start at the periphery. I'll make a small skin wheel so that you've got good anesthesia there, and then advance my needle, and you're basically forming a field around the cutaneous borders of this abscess. You want to try to avoid going through infected areas because you can just track that infection. So once I go in, you pull back to make sure you're not in, in a vessel, and then you just inject as you go along. So now you have this area anesthetized, and it's nice. You've got to keep moving, but you always want to put your needle in an area that's already been anesthetized so that they do not feel the pain of the cutaneous uh, puncture. That's really the part that hurts is the puncture part. So now going in this direction and infiltrating after aspirating. And you basically continue that till you have gone completely around the area. I won't do this end just for time's sake, but the last part of it, after you've gone completely around to the starting point, is going to be infiltrating the dome of the abscess. Pretty much, that's you're going to be making your incision at the point of most fluctuance for this abscess. I'm going to feel it, and basically, that's going to be at that area right there. In terms of making that dome infiltration, again, I like to try to start somewhere of anesthetized, but you're going to be basically putting it into the skin. Be aware this may be painful because you're already infiltrating an area that's tender and swollen and just injecting in that area as you move along, along where you plan to do your incision. Another thing that might be helpful is if you're unsure there's an abscess or you're trying to figure out where that pocket of pus is, if you have access to an ultrasound, this is very easily seen with ultrasound. You take your linear probe, go over the area of erythema where you think the abscess is, and you'll be able to see the abscess pocket if there is pus there. It's going to be kind of a darker pocket. We'll, uh, we'll, we can review that in ultrasound, one of our ultrasound videos. So now your patient is properly anesthetized, it's time for making the I part of the IND, the incision. When you're making your incision, there's two things you want to remember. The first is make sure you're using an 11 blade because it's a nice long sharp blade that you can puncture and kind of make that cut. The surgical blades will work, but they're a little bit harder to use with a curved blade. So one that has a nice puncture part is going to be useful. The other thing is when I make this incision, you want to try to make it along the entire abscess. So when I'm feeling the fluctuance on this, I can feel that my abscess pocket, I'm guessing, is between here. So when I'm making my cut, you really want to take advantage of that and open that up. You never want to just make a small hole and try to work through that hole. It's going to be very hard to access it. Opening it appropriately is going to be important. You obviously don't want to make a huge laceration if you don't have to, but don't be too gentle. Now, going over the area that you've anesthetized, you now take that blade, and you can cut and make your incision. And you know that you're in the abscess when you start having that perlant material and fluid coming out through. Putting your blade away, 
The next step is you don't always have to culture abscesses, but if this is a complex infection or an immunocompromised patient or a recurrent abscess, sometimes culturing this perlant material is going to help you narrow down your antibiotic choices. And if it's not responding to the IND or gets worse, you now have an idea of what type of bug was causing that, and you can maybe be a little more specific in terms of your antibiotic use. So sending it off for culture, not always standard, but in complex cases, always a good idea. The next step in terms of this IND, and probably the most important part, is going to be blunt dissection. So basically, you're going to be taking your blunt curved forceps. You want to get a couple 4 by 4s with this. And this is also the part that is the most painful for the IND. So if you need to reintroduce some uh, lidocaine into that abscess after you've opened it, you can do that. But just remember, you want to move cautiously and gently because it is pretty painful. You're taking your blunt forceps, and you're going into that abscess, and you basically bluntly dissect and you're opening. And by blunt dissection, I mean you're going in and opening, and you're breaking up all the loculations that are inside that abscess, being sure to get all the pockets of pus. This is an especially juicy one. Looks kind of like butterscotch pudding, which is one of my favorite flavors. And using the 4x4 four four to kind of clean up and pick up that pus so it's not running down all over the place is just kind of a style point. But again, these can be messy. These can pop out and shoot at you, so that's why the eye protection is important. Getting it on the walls, just make sure you clean it up at the, at the end. And you open that up and try to get all those areas, all those pockets of pus until you don't have any pockets left in there and you're sure that you've really explored and opened up the entire abscess. I like to keep a little area where I have a, my dirty tools so that I kind of know where they are and I can keep them contained in one area. I'll put all my used 4x4s four four in that spot as well. Milking the abscess is not really necessary. It often causes a lot of pain, but if you are having some areas you want to see how much pus is left, giving a little bit of pressure on the outside is going to be okay. So after the blunt dissection opening, you're going to want to irrigate that abscess. You basically get a large syringe. I like a 60cc, 30cc is fine. Oftentimes, they'll come with a little protective cap that pushes the water in, but also protects from the spray back from coming at you, which is helpful. Uh, normal saline works well. You can use tap water if you need to, but usually normal saline is nice and clean. You don't have to worry about any contamination. You put your protective cap on it. And for this part, I always grab a couple extra 4x4s four because the spray can come out. You're basically going to be pressurizing and putting some normal saline in there and clearing it out. You're filling up that abscess. It helps debride all the necrotic tissue. It's going to be pretty messy, so be aware of that. Using some towels down to help pick up some of that water is also useful. And, you know, you just basically irrigate it out till what you have coming out is relatively clear. You don't have a whole lot of pus left, and you've done adequate irrigation. So now that's irrigated, I like to sometimes do one last step before I kind of pack this, is taking in a co cotton tip applicator. And again, you can kind of go back in here. You can do this with your blunt forceps if you want. But I'm just, again, feeling and making sure there aren't any residual pockets after I've irrigated or large pockets of pus that still need to be drained. And you can see there's pretty much, I'm feeling the edges of my abscess. There's no deeper tracks. And I'm not getting a whole lot of perlant material coming out. So. Once you've irrigated the wound and broken up those loculations, the last step really is to pack it and dress it. You want to pack it so that it keeps the wound open. If we left this unpacked, basically the skin's going to heal faster than the abscess underneath, and you can just get a reaccumulation of the abscess pocket and the pus and the infection. So the packing allows drainage over the course of the next couple of days as this heals itself. This is half inch packing. You can have quarter inch, there's different types. Some of them are impregnated, others are plain. Doesn't really doesn't really matter which ones you use. And what I'm going to be using in terms of packing it is going to be my blunt curved forceps, cleaning off the pus, obviously. And you just basically grab the end of that packing, and you're going to introduce it into the wound. Now, if you notice, I've never really ever put my finger in there. People used to say, oh, I'll just blunt dissect with my fingers, or I'll pack with my finger. 
You don't really want to do that for a couple reasons. A, it's just gross putting your finger into a pus pocket. And B, if there's any foreign objects like that, like if this is a shooter's abscess, just a broken needle in there, anything that may puncture you, that's clearly a risk for infectious diseases. As you pack this, you just want to go in all the directions of the abscess. You do not need to overpack. This is a loose packing. Overpacking just creates pain and more distension. But you want to make sure you don't have any gaping big spaces that still are open. That's pretty much it for this packing. You can see I've got some excess. I cut off a tail. You obviously want to leave the tail so someone knows that that's in there. And that way you have something to pull when you remove it. The last step at this point is just using an absorbent gauze dressing. This is going to drain over the course of the next couple days with that packing in there. And you just want a bandage that's really going to pull that off. Okay, so now that we've completed the IND and bandaged up the patient, I want to talk about a couple post-IND treatment considerations. The first one is packing. While traditionally we've been taught that Almost all abscesses need to be packed with the concept that you're keeping it open and allowing it to drain over the course of the next couple of days. Newer literature has shown that really not all abscesses need to, and it's based on size and the patient's underlying medical conditions. So newer recommendations now say that you can consider not packing abscesses in healthy patients without any other underlying comorbidities such as diabetes or immunosuppression, and if the abscess is less than five centimeters. That being said, if the abscess is larger than five centimeters or is a complex abscess in a patient with underlying immunosuppression, diabetic, medications that are gonna compromise your immune system, you wanna actually still consider packing that abscess to help with the healing process and again, that draining process. The second consideration is antibiotics. Again, traditionally, we've been taught that the treatment for abscesses is IND, and they don't really require antibiotics, unless there was a surrounding cellulitis, again, if they're immunocompromised, or there were signs of systemic infection like SIRS or sepsis. Newer literature has shown that treating most all abscesses with antibiotics actually can increase the cure rate as well as decrease the recurrence of these abscesses. So that being said, our newer recommendations are if the abscess is larger than two centimeters, has multiple abscesses or complex abscess, is uh, in a patient that is immunocompromised, such as a diabetic or someone on medications that's causing immunosuppression, if there's a surrounding cellulitis as before, there are any signs of SIRS or sepsis, or they have an indwelling medical device that's close to this uh, abscess or infection, or if it's a patient who has a high risk of transmission, such as someone who's in a college dorm or has a lot of family members or in the military, these are patients where we actually recommend doing a course of antibiotics. The course could be anywhere from five to seven days, and you're trying to prevent, again, the recurrence of this abscess and increase the cure rate. To kind of boil that down to make sense, I kind of look at it like this. If I have a healthy patient with an abscess that's less than two centimeters without any surrounding cellulitis or signs of systemic infection, I'll consider actually not doing antibiotics and having close follow-up. Otherwise, I'll just start the patient on that course antibiotics and all of these patients, I have them follow up in 48 hours, typically with me or their primary care physician. And really what you're doing at that point is reevaluating the wound, making sure the infection has responded to the IND and the antibiotics. And if you have packing, you can remove it at that point. Pretty much after that, you can let the patient go home, solid return precautions for any worsening infection or signs of systemic illness, and you're pretty much done.